I just want to make an announcement that they have Kit Kats on sale at Rite Aid for 32 cents each. Bye. Hi. Guess what? Hello. Hello. Guess what? What happened? I submitted my early college apps. <laughs> Yay. Congratulations, Diana. Thank you. Congratulations. Really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, what's up? Oh, but uh, what's it called now? Now I have CSUs and UC applications and I'm just, ah! It only gets harder from here. Oh, I bet. Oh. Yeah, now you have to think about what you, what you have to wear to your interview. If I have an interview. Well, you know, you, that's not a good uh, way to think about it. You already, winners, what is it? You win before you, you go to. <laughs> the sun's here. Oh, show 601. How many members do we have here? I'm not good at this. Mm, we have. We have 17? 17? Oops. No, no, 10, 10 panelists. We have 11 panelists. Okay, so who's on the um, attendees side? Because we have issues with- Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. I'm getting everyone on. Oh. I was on a phone call. We have, Victor. we have Victor on the um, Hi. side. I got Joanna. Uh, Joe Irajeta is in attendees. Yeah, I just put on the show. Oh. Here Joe. Ooh, baby. So just for, so everybody from the public knows, uh, go to our website, lincolnheightsnc.org. Under uh, agendas at the top of the screen, click on that and then click on um, today's date agendas and there will be the supporting documents. Uh, all right, so how many members do we have now? We have 14 now. Okay, uh, 14 members. This meeting is called to order. Uh, my name is Sylvain Dunning, president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. Um, the people uh, who will be more prominent, it's Vince, the man behind the, the controls, and then we have Fernie, the moderator. This is part of the EVG protocols of Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. This is a Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council general board and stakeholder meeting. The date is November 4th, Thursday, 2021, and it is six something p.m., 6.03, 6.02 p.m. Okay, uh, with that, um, Secretary Sanchez, um, roll call, please. Sarah Clendenning. Present. Ben Wadsworth. Chente Montalvo. Present. Fernanda Sanchez here. William Rodriguez. Nancy Soto. Here. Benny Madera. Here. Didier Delizer. Hi. Here. Joanna Iraeta. <laughs> Present. Hey. Diana Tran. Hi. Richard Larson. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it wasn't on mute. I'm here. Sorry, guys. Vicente Gonzalez. Armida Marrufo. Victor Asanedo. I'm here. Diego Zapata. Gil Arevalo. He emailed he wouldn't be here. Richard Ortiz. Present. Steve Lucero. Right here. Sajui. Oh, Lena will be. Oops. Lena. Oh, here. Oh, here. Selena. 
And Selena has an excused absence. And then so does Diego. Diego as well. He has an excused right. absence. Right. We have quorum with 15. All right. And with that, we're going to move on to non agenda public comment. If there's anybody from the public who would like to comment on something that's not on the agenda, you have two minutes to speak. Please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine. Thank you. Okay, Mitzi Watsu, please state your name for the record. And you have two minutes. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Misty Watsu. I'm the executive director of the Lincoln Heights Benefit Association of Los Angeles. Uh, this past, the past neighborhood council boards uh, worked together with us to make Lincoln Heights beautiful and the neighborhood safe uh, through mutual respect. I asked this board if they have issues with the LHBA to come to us instead of having secret meetings and not inviting us or letting us know that we are on the agenda as this is unethical. To say that the LHBH, LHBA is against the homeless is misguided and incorrect. We are hoping for a more positive response from the neighborhood council and protecting our community and all our stakeholders. The last thing this community needs is for the neighborhood council to only have a negative agenda. We would be happy to be invited to a board meeting to address the whole board. We should all be working together in a positive direction for the betterment of this community. All right, thank you, Misty Iwatsu. Um, any other public comments? Yes, R.R., uh, can you please state your name? Oh, Vince, one second. Yes. Recording. Oh. Sorry, oh, I, just, Sarah? I just wanted to verify that it was recording, sorry. Okay. Hi, Hi my, uh, my name is Ronnie, um, Ronnie Rudolph. Um, I'm calling in regards to, I've talked in the past or joined your guys' meetings and, um, and I've also reached out via email to everybody on the board. I have still yet to really hear back from anybody um, in a positive manner in which trying to work with the community to better it. Um, I think it's pretty disappointing that a lot of that gets put out there um, by many of these board members is, is just a lot of hate. Like there's, you know, for me, you know, you guys have whatever your guys' opinions are. We have our opinions. Uh, you know, I have my opinion. Everybody has an opinion. But at the end of the day, it's to try to better Lincoln Heights. And that's my goal. My goal is to try and benefit, you know, and do what's best for Lincoln Heights. But there's no meeting of the minds because there's no meeting at all. It's just you guys, a lot of the board members having their meetings and, and sub meetings and ad hoc and whatever and talking about all these negative and hateful things all the time. And all I'm trying to do is to do what we can and come to a meeting of a mind and have peace to where we can do what's best for Lincoln Heights. But instead it's just, well, you're this, you're that, making up fake you know, things of who I am and I'm an illegal lobbyist, even though I'm lobbying for nothing other than try to benefit Lincoln Heights. So that's, that's all I have to say. And you know, I hope you guys can take that, to, take that to mind and everybody on the board can actually you know, try and do what's best for Lincoln Heights and not what's best for your own personal agenda and what you think is best for Lincoln Heights. Because the reality is, Neighborhood Council, the bid, everybody in Lincoln Heights doesn't just speak for Lincoln Heights. It's 38,000 people that speak for it. And me, Sarah, everybody else on the board, we're just one person. And our opinion doesn't matter among the masses. We need everybody to come together for peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ronnie. I, see, right. no more, <clears throat> I see no more public comment. No more public comments. OK, so with that. So item four, five, and six, the approval of board minutes 516, that will be tabled to the next meeting. Number five, uh, approval of XCOM min minutes. Those can only be approved at an XCOM meeting, so we have to table that, right, Vince? So yeah, right. Then XCOM. And then the next one, six, is a budget meeting. So would that have to be approved by the budget committee? Which uh, item? Item six. Committees approve their own minutes, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so, yeah, so that will be tabled. Um, eight, government reports. I invited, well, last minute, uh, CD14. Um, let's see. We have someone with their hand up. Is someone supposed to present? Um, oh, oh, that person with a hand up, that's a phone number. Can you verify their identity? Can you see who that is, if it's a board member? Yeah, I had my hand up. Oh, is that Richard? No, no, that's yeah. not Richard. This was in the attendee side. Oh, is Richard here now? What time did you arrive? Somebody keeps muting me. 
Okay. I, somebody good. keeps muting me. I don't know. I have, I've had my hand up and I'm just Need waiting enough. to. What is this 1310 number? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute if they can identify themselves. Do, do you mind if I? Richard. Hello? Uh, no, Hello? I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating that you were uh, You're out of the line. If you will be I, had, I had my hand up. You're out of order and you're, you're not a public a commenter. This is public. Yes, I am. I'm commenting as a public person. You're a board member. And if you uh, interrupt. No, you, I can comment as a public. No, you can't. It's a violation. It's not. Okay. Can okay. I make, Sarah, can I make a statement? Yes. I want to, I want to keep it civil and I don't want to have to take the Let's ability for people to unmute themselves. So if we can please only speak when recognized right now, we're trying to identify someone in the public. Yeah. To make sure that they're not someone from the city that needs to speak. Yeah. So if the person that has the number is 046, if you can please identify yourself if you're part of a city agency to make a report. Hello? So Sarah, they're, they're unmuted, but I, they're not saying anything. Hello, 310 uh, with the last three digits, 046. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, hey, sir. it's Anne I had to call in on the attendee side because Okay. Um, Got you. yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've texted you guys like before six o'clock. Uh, and okay. so I just want to, I don't know if there's a way that via phone that I can be a panelist or if how that would work. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to mute you right now. And then I'm going to try to move you over to panels to see if, if it allows us right now. Give, just give me one second. Oh, sorry. All right. Bye. All right. So. Let me, let me just make this for the record. Annalie, you're going to have to stay on the panelist side. Um, on the control panel, it doesn't allow me to make you into a, a, a panelist on our side, but you could still participate from that side. Just raise your hand when you have to speak. I recognize the number now. So when we open for public comment, I'll make sure to look over to the attendee side. But you'd have to participate today from the attendee side. All right. So, and then for voting purposes, just um, don't take away her permission to speak. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. On that point, can I uh, can I have my two oh. minutes? I'm the I have, an un I have a uh, unagendized public comment. Thank you. Not so not some in our community are reporting that they have been. Vince, uh, he's out of order. So come on. Uh, listen, Richard. you're out of line. You need you to guys are blocking me. Comment time. I've had my I've had my hand up for ten minutes. That's under public I have had my hand up for ten minutes and was Richard, not recognized. Once again, you, you interrupt one more. Interrupt. I am Richard. not. I am not. I am asking for my. Have you been in the meeting for ten minutes, Richard? Please. Yes, I have been. I, have I just want to make. I just want to make a point, Richard. You have not been recognized. At you this have not been recognized by the chair. You uh, my hand, Sarah, my hand Sarah, is up, so recognize me. Thank you. At, at this point, you are being disruptive and you're derailing the meeting. That is a clear violation of the code of conduct. The chair well, has the I'm sorry, I had my hand up. You are that's not correct. I would just and like to chair I have a public again, amount. I have a public time, announcement to make. This is you're a, as, you're as violating as, my rights of free speech, and I really I really don't as appreciate the control that. panelists right now. I'm just gonna make one thing. If this does not stop. I'm going to remove the ability for board members to unmute themselves, and we're going to have to go to a more control setting. I have a non-agendized public Sarah, comment. My hand Sarah, was up, and I'd like to be yeah. recognized. Sarah, I need I need to ask you as the president: Is that okay if I can put it on a, yeah. so that the panelists uh, can unmute really. themselves? Mute mute everyone because of Richard. I can have a, I have a public not, announcement I'd like to make if nobody it's objects. Not to public it. announcement. Time. Oh, I had my hand up when that was announced and I was not recognized. I feel like I'm not, not being given the right to speak. Here I, I would call. like to. Call. Okay, it's over. Um, all right, so now we, do we have any more public comments, comments from the public? Please raise your hand or press star nine. Uh, we, no, we do not. So Annalie, could you put your hand down, please? I'm lowering her hand now. Okay, uh, so we're gonna move on to Community and board announcements. Are there any community announcements? Anybody from the community who would like to make an announcement to the public, to the board, please press star nine or raise your hand, please. <coughs> okay. Um, Annalie, uh, we'll let you speak right now because right now it's open to the public. I know you raised your hand this on is it. public comment right now, yeah. public announcement. Anybody from the public? 
No? All right. So anybody, any board members have any announcements? Let's go. Um, okay. Anna Lee. Anna Lee. Uh, um, outreach is going to be having a, a meeting coming okay, that's up. Committee announcements. Committee announcements. Oh, this sorry. Is, okay. This public. This is just uh, community and board announcements outside of the the committee announcements. Committee is leaving. Uh, do you? Have, yeah. Uh, maybe. Sorry, I interrupted you. Um, okay. Any board members have any community announcements? I don't, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, I do. I have some community announcements. There's a program called Big Leap. There's a supporting document in, on our website. Uh, it's guaranteed income. The, the city's choosing 3,500 families to give, I think it's 1,200 or $1,000 a month to. Uh, the deadline to apply is Sunday on the 7th, November 7th. Vince, could you pull up the document from our supporting documents, please? This is super important. It's called Big Leap. Um, do -do -do, it's at the top. There it is, Big Leap, top right. Yeah, so this program, so that there's an English one, 200, and then there's uh, the qualifying stuff. Uh, yeah, so the deadline's on um, Sunday to apply. And uh, to qualify, yeah, uh, you have to uh, live in LA, 18 or older, have at least one dependent child or be pregnant. Your income level has to be below the federal, federal poverty level. And you have to ha have experienced economic hardship due to COVID-19. And it's sort of a lottery. So they're selecting families. So, um, you know, I think a lot, you know, I wanna get people to apply from Lincoln Heights and let this be known. Uh, great. And the city actually sent it to us to advertise this. And um, there's another thing, let's see. Big leap. I think that's it. Okay. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any other board member announcements? Uh, yeah. Any? And just everyone be a little patient because when we have, when we don't allow people to unmute themselves. It takes a little while for their mics to catch on. But Benny, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, just um, uh, an update on um, the MPG grant that we gave to um, Lincoln High School for their portable water tank. It's been uh, more um, successful, more of a success than I ever thought. I mean, you got the kids running to it every chance they get for their break. Uh, the team, uh, I know the football team is still undefeated. Actually, they went undefeated 10-0 and for the regular season. They got their uh, first playoff game against Lake Balboa Birmingham High School a week from this Friday. Should be November the 12th. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, and um, invite folks to, to come. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Benny. Benny. Uh, we have another one. Uh, Victor. Victor. Hi, Victor. Hi, everyone. This is Victor. Um, I just want to announce that um, uh, finally we we're able to uh, add additional stop signs on uh, Darwin and Eastlake. Uh, there was complaints there by constituents that um, there's a lot of accidents and people speeding. So as of this morning, they had added the additional stop signs. So hopefully that alleviates any um, more accidents there. Um, you know, I by earlier today, and then they also freshly painted the floors to advise people there's additional stop signs there now. One. And this is on East Lake and Darwin. Thank you, Victor. Thank you so much. Okay. Nancy. Hello. Hey. Hi. Is this where I can make the announcement or is it? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I guess so. Is it? Is it? Yeah. You can make announcements, sure. The Chick-fil-A announcement? Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a, hi everyone. Uh, there's a proposed project to um, open a Chick-fil-A at the corner of Broadway and Griffin. 
uh, which is currently where the bite right stands. Um, and uh, I think it's a terrible idea. And for many reasons. Um, so I would just like to request that as the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council, we submit a community impact statement against this project. Uh, yeah, for our next meeting. All right, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, any other board member announcements? I see none on the board. Okay, do we have any attendees announcements? We have Misty Iwatsu with, oh wait, uh, yeah, okay, so Misty and then, oh wait, we have we have Anna Lee too, so um, on the attendee side then. Okay, Anna Lee. Hey, um, yeah, so we're going to have a outreach meeting um, coming up at the beginning of next week. We don't have a date set yet, but stay tuned and we will let everybody know. And uh, yeah, so that's so. all. Okay, thank you, Anna Lee. Uh, Misty Owatsu, but, uh, of the Lincoln Heights Benefit Association of LA, the bid. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that we are continuing the market match for um, the farmer's market for all EBT users, uh, the free $20 until December. Okay, EBT thank you. Part. All right, thank you. All right, um, let's see. All right, so okay. I, I see no I see no more hands on the panelists or the attendees side. Okay, so now we're going to move on. Um, government report CD fourteen. I don't see them here, and then CD one is not here. So okay, so we'll skip that. Or if you are here, let it be known. Um, committee announcements. Now I kind of broke it down here. I'm going to start with XCOM. Fernie, could you? Are you here, Ferns? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so Vince, in the um, supporting documents, we have the uh, a file called vacancies. Let it load real quick. There it is. It's a uh, 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 go up. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that old English one right there. Yeah, Bernie, could you could you talk about the vacancies? We have three right now. We have three vacancies for the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. The three seats available are business rep, area four resident representative, and area seven representative. If you're interested, please email me at fernanda.sanchezlhnc at gmail.com, and I will respond to you at my earliest convenience. Thank you. Just so everybody knows we have, so on our supporting documents, there is a file here that you're looking at and then it has the qualifying information and the maps. Vince, can you scroll down a little bit? All right, what is a stakeholder, blah, blah, blah. Keep going there. There's the qualifications for business rep. That's area four rep. So that's Lincoln. Yeah, that's the USC area Lincoln, uh, below Lincoln Park, all, um, all south of Maine. And then area seven rep is what is now yeah, in your St. Vincent to the river. And then there's an application PDF too. All right. Uh, another thing I wanna announce is that um, uh, to our board is that uh, we have to do this planning. Well, if you're a planning and land use member, you have to do this planning 101 uh, thing by uh, I think December 1st. And then if you're a board member, now this, this is really important. You have to do this ABLE training by the end of November. Vince, what's ABLE? ABLE is, uh, now you got me off guard. <laughs> In, uh, it's bias, it's implicit bias, there we go. So this is through the cornerstone, like how we did the ethics and everything like that. Correct. And I think everyone has to go to their cornerstone. You should check your email. Most of you guys received your, your, pass, your username and your passcode to your cornerstone where you did the training. And uh, I didn't see what the deadline was for the training. Do you know, Sarah? Oh, it's the end of November. So by the end of November, it's it, you, we have to do it. So it's, it's three modules that are there. It's already in your like cornerstone account. You just have to log in and do it. It's, it says it's two hours long. I'm not sure. But if you don't do this, yeah, you can't like vote and stuff like that. Um, all right, that's a city mandate. All city employees and elected public officials have to do that. Uh, I want to give an update on the redistricting hearing. 
So we wrote a community impact statement and we're permitted to speak at the um, LA City Council redistricting committee final hearing where they voted on the final map for, to present to city council. Um, Fernanda read the community impact statement. That was, and only four neighborhood councils spoke at that meeting. Um, unfortunately, the next day, the I guess the city council meeting was canceled, so they didn't vote. Um, anyway, there's a lot of activity on the redistricting front and we'll keep you updated. Uh, Vince, any, any, any XCOM announcements? Okay. No, none, none that I have. Hey, okay, Fernie. Uh, ben, any XCOM announcements? No, I'm just, I'm curious about, uh, our office space, but. Well, that is now in CD14 almost. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, our office space. Okay, so we're going to move on to rules and bylaws committee. That's Ben. Ben, there's a, there's a deadline for the rules and bylaws. I think it's April, 2022. So we're going to start our meetings and then amend our bylaws soon, right? Ben? Uh -oh. Well, we'll move on to Budget and Finance Committee. Budget Committee, Vince? Yes, budget and Finance, uh, there's nothing yet, and we hope to hold a meeting the first of the new year to reassess, you know, some of the projects that might come out of outreach or that the, that the board may be wanting to create and also <laughs> Our, our grants. And so we will reassess the budget at that time. So it'll be good to see what the committees are going to come up with. All right. And next is a program and programs and services committee. That's uh, Victor and Gil, but Gil's not here today. So Victor, any announcements? Can you hand me? Victor? Oh, there he is. Oh, it popped up. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to unmute myself. Sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, the only announcement we have besides the street signs that we're uh, able to complete is um, there is a, a program called the Sidewalk and Transit Amenities Program, which is a st um, staff. It's by the Bureau of Street Services. Um, they're actually going to, they're working on a program to get, um, uh, what would it be, hold on, to upgrade, to yeah. install and upgrade transit shelters and associated amenities to provide shelter, shade, safety, and comfort for transit riders. So pretty much where the bus stops are or, or any transit, um, they're going to replace a lot of them. I, I believe they're getting public comments until November 12th right now. So if you're going to look it up, uh, staff sidewalk and transit amenities program, it's about a 200 page um, report draft if you yeah. have some time. Right. I'm sorry? We have it on our, uh, as a supporting document. Oh, perfect. Now, this is kind of important. Vince, can you go to our supporting documents again? Sorry. No, go ahead. And if you know a little bit more, Sarah, because I'm, I'm, I'm still okay. reading it, so I'm not sure if you had a chance this, to go. So you know the JC Deco bus stops? JC Deco? So uh, there it is, STAP. And I put the uh, EIR in there. So STAP is a program where JC Deco so, so Parsons is this kind of, the person presenting this is sort of a lobbyist for the uh, actual company, JC Deco, but uh, this was prepared by Bureau of Street Services. So uh, STAP is, JC Deco is giving uh, street furniture and bus stops to the city of LA in exchange for ad space. So you get the free bus stop with the, their, the proposals are pretty technological. Some of them don't even have bus seats and screens and stuff like that, but they get the free ad revenue and then the city gets free bus furniture. So this files on our website and the uh, public feedback deadline is uh, I believe November 12th um, for the EIR in any case, uh, it's super important, uh, especially with public, uh, with advertisements on the public right of way. So this is public property, all right. Any other um, programs announcements, Victor? No? 
Okay. Um, so next we'll move to outreach and events. Uh, Nancy. Hi, uh, no announcements. Can you summarize what happened uh, at the ofrenda? Um, oh yeah, we uh, had a, a community ofrenda honoring our neighborhood. And um, I'd like to thank everyone that participated and uh, that came by the event. It was really beautiful. Yeah, it was. All right, so uh, next we'll move to, oh, okay. So Selena isn't here, city and government elections. Planning and Land Use Committee, uh, my announcement is that we have seats available to stakeholders. Uh, we have seven board member seats filled, but I believe we have five public seats available. So if you're interested, just email me. Uh, all right. Um, Holiday Parade Committee, May, uh, Annalie. Three one zero zero four six. All right. Well, we'll skip the holiday holiday break committee. Uh, sustainability ad hoc, Vince. We're currently working on the agenda, and I know right now uh, Diego's been a little bit busy, so we can get everything situated. But we should be holding a meeting soon, and it should be posted up on our website. And we welcome the public to come and bring sustainability issues. All right. And uh, just so everybody knows, all of the committees were open to uh, to neighborhood members, right? Uh, so if anybody from the community wants to join any of our committees, just hit us up. Uh, so next we will move on to the Tenants right, Rights Ad Hoc Committee, uh, Fernanda Sanchez. Hi, so we haven't had any official meetings or anything like that, um, but I do wanna get this started as soon as possible just because it's a pressuring issue in the community. Uh, the goal for the committee is to really just spread information about the resources available to us for tenants that are facing eviction um, or any sort of landlord harassment uh, because tenants do have rights. Um, and historically, um, tenants have been taken advantage of in the way that they are being displaced. Um, so, for example, at the Eviction Defense Network, um, every Saturday at 1 p.m., they have legal clinics at the Church of Epiphany here in Lincoln Heights. Um, and that's something that not everyone knows about and something that we should definitely um, be advertising, as well as the support network that we have with the Lincoln Heights Tenants Union Network. Um, every Tuesday, they have um, a support system for anyone that's facing eviction, um, as well as just resources on uh, what tenants' rights look like. Um, and yeah. All right, thank you, Bernie. Yeah. Next, we'll move on to ARC Liaison, that's Alliance of River Communities. Vince? So ARC had the, uh, they canceled their meeting for November due to uh, schedule uh, conflicts with some of the city agencies. But um, I spoke with the steering committee and the steering committee is hoping to have a really good meeting in December for everyone to join. All right. So we'll see everybody in December. Okay, cool. Thank you, Vince. And then Diana with the LGBT Alliance Liaison. Have you guys had a meeting yet this month, Diana? Um, Let's see. Okay. Diana. Hello? Hey. Hi. Hey. Yay, you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, we did have a meeting. We had a week, uh, we had a meeting, uh, just a minute. Bah, thing. Go down our game. Uh let's see, we had a meeting last last week. And um, so uh, most of the meeting, like I'd say about half the meeting was dedicated to talking with, um, oh, just a minute, was uh, to talk with, wait, where, where is it? With a councilwoman. Uh, one sec, let me find her name. So, sorry. Was it Nithya? Yes. 
Okay, Nithya Rama. Yeah, Nithya Rama. Yeah, she was so cool and amazing. It, 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 it says 30 minutes, but it lasted way longer than that. Just let me tell you, it was an amazing conversation to have with her. And she was so cool and inspiring. Um, and then there were general stuff. There was general stuff. Um, uh, I was, I, I was, um, ex so they accepted my appointment as the neighborhood council liaison for Lincoln Heights because they still hadn't done that yet. Uh, and then there was some, uh, up, there was an update on a, uh, on uh, how uh, a transgender, uh, transgender women were attacked in MacArthur Park, right? And also on, I think it was the evictions that had been going on for, uh, with the dis, uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, dis, displaced people there. And then people, and then I think, and then somebody resigned from a position, uh, the secretary position. And then there were like people, we were just talking about how meetings in the future would be um, because uh, there were issues with it being held on um, weekends and also um, just, uh, just not a lot of people go, uh, coming probably because it was on the weekend or something. So, uh, so many times might change. And I gave a heartwarming story about the youth of um, Lincoln Heights uh, specifically and how we were a lot more like gender inclusive and like open minded than say older generations. No offense to anybody. Right. Thank you, Diana. Those are some good notes. Thank you. All right. And uh, we're going to move on to the final one. Uh, animal liaison, uh, Melanie Paloma Shipman. Announcement here. No. Sorry, sit. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. See that last part again, Sarah. The oh, just an announcement. Yes. Animal liaison. Yes. Okay. So, uh, one second. Let me go hide. I'm sorry. All right. Um, there is a supporting document on this that we can pull up, but um, pretty long story short, the shelters are overrun. They're at max capacity. Um, and I think we all know what that means when we do hit max, max capacity at the shelters. Um, animals either get adopted or euthanized. Oh, it's so sad, I know. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so, um, and, and typically at Lacey Street Shelter, which is our community shelter, um, the euthanasia rate is much higher than the adoption rate. I'm so sorry. Oh man! <laughs> like, um, so I just a, a announcement to essentially say we really need to figure out a way to help facilitate facilitate the adoptions. Um, I'll be coming up with some solutions, and I'll get back to everybody on that. But I just want to make the rest of the board aware and the community aware, so that we can hopefully come together and figure out a way to help the animals of Lincoln Heights. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry for this announcement. I love you guys. I'm sorry. They're just singing. They're singing babies. All right. Thank you, Mel. And North Central Animal Shelter is on Lacey Street. We can find your new best friend. All right. So now we're going to move on to new agenda items. 10. 10A. Uh, approval of October 2021 uh, monthly expenditure report. Vince. That hasn't uh, been issued yet, correct? Yeah, the uh, the monthly uh, report for October has not been generated by the city yet. So we'll have to continue that to our next monthly meeting. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to 10B, Treasurer, uh, discussion and possible action on Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council office supply mm -hmm. items, printing items, uh, funding up to $1,000. So these, these items are things that we needed like for the uh, like Dia de los Muertos or any projects that would come up into the future where we need printing specifically when we're dealing with the public and we need to have our documents printed and available when we do get out uh, in front of the public again. So these are just some things we're gonna need, which is a printer um, in, this, in, in this estimate, it's an e Epson EcoTank E uh, T3850 all in one. Um, there's also a, a Boise paper, which is the cheapest paper we can use right now. That's affordable at 39 for 10 reams. Each ream has uh, 500 papers, 500 sheets, excuse me. And then two packs of the, uh, the color ink and two packs of the black ink. 
um, right now this price here is an estimate and this mm -hmm. estimate was done by using Office Depot, right? Um, but at the very top, it mentions that at any time, because sometimes these sales end, the prices go higher, we tend to go to the wherever it's the most cheapest to be wiseful with the public spending. Um, so we can purchase this really anywhere. If it's not at Home Depot, if we find it cheaper somewhere, we'll be able to purchase it at a cheaper price. We have purchasing uh, power to either do it at the store or online to get a better discount on it. So this may change. It, it's probably not going to go higher. It'll probably go lower than right now. Currently with the current taxes, $654.65. The agenda item is calling for funding not to exceed 1000 that's usually done in the event that something might skyrocket at the time, but I don't see that happening. So in reality, it, it, the this item should not exceed more than than six hundred and sixty dollars to be safe. But we and have then, that cushion top. Vince, that's a inkjet color printer where you squirt in the box. This actually, it's called like eco. What is it called? Eco. It's called an eco tank. Because I'm kind of a like a laser jet nerd, you know, for just flyers, you know, black and white, right? Yeah. This Eco jet, jet. This is uh, ink jet. So you squirt in this bottle of ink. It has tanks on it. Uh, it will be good for colorful things. Um, it, Vince, if there's um, excess funding in this, uh, I think our other printers are, like gaffled up over at the old headquarters. We have to take inventory over there. Uh, in any case, uh, well, I, I think like even with this, once um, outreach settles down and we can actually get a list together. There's other items like, um, I used to use those uh, laminate pit sheets. So when we make posters, people used to say, yeah, but the paper either gets wet or it flies away, right? So the laminate sheets are things that we can purchase to make our advertisements better in the community. So all of that is like, even with projects at the outreach or even in land use, if we wanna post something up that's really important for the public, we can laminate them with those things. So there's some items I can send out, but if any one of the board members can submit items into this for our next meeting, and we can definitely mm -hmm. go out and purchase and start to use these items in our advertisements. And then if anybody from the community wants to utilize our print resource for like, say they're doing something, can they do, Can they talk to us and then- Yeah, they can talk to us on it. Yeah, definitely. That would be great because you know when you look for a printing place in Lincoln Heights to do Xeroxes or anything, there's nothing. Exactly. There's nowhere to get any printing done. All right, uh, we're going to move on to the next item. We have two okay. hands up real quick. Okay, well we're not taking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a funding item. Anytime we order anything for the office, we should do a BAC. Okay. So right now I'll make the motion. Let me just bring up the agenda again. I'll make the motion to approve the Lincoln Heights office funding items, which is going to be a print, a printer, uh, two boxes of uh, Boise paper, 10 reams each, uh, two color ink packets, and two black ink packets. Uh, and the funding should not be up to $1,000. Do we have a second? Oh, are they muted? <clears throat> oh, yeah, they're muted. Hold on. Oh. Let's unmute everything. Oh, second. Okay, Fernanda seconds. Okay, <clears throat> let me see. I, you want me to unmute every any everybody, Sarah? I can. Well, no, I mean, no, not right now. Okay. So we're gonna open it up to discussion. Uh, so if anybody board members have anything to say about this item, uh, we uh, Victor's hand has been up. Victor. Okay, Victor. No, I just wanted to mention that Jose Galdam is on our tennis side. He's oh. our advocate. Okay, yep. so Don Rep Jose Galdemez is here on the panel. Yes, yeah, I moved them over to panelists. Okay, oh, okay. Right. just want to oh. announce that. Sorry. Thank you, Victor. So, any other board member comments on this item about treasure, um, about our printing supplies? We, I, ha I have none with hand raised. Okay, any attendee comments? All right. Oh, so one second. There's one that Jose, Jose, give me one second. Okay, hey, Jose. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Jose Galvez with the Department of Neighborhood Department. Uh, just regarding the item itself, I uh, just want to, uh, like, I'm recommending for the board to table for the next board meeting, uh, since it's not, does not provide sufficient information on what exactly the office items are uh, for the public on the agenda. 
uh, so like if, if for the next uh, for the for the next board meeting, if you can include exactly what those items entailed on the agenda item itself, uh, you know, it can give more of an idea to the public of what exactly are being expended. We, we have a supplemental document with it. Uh, yeah, I understand. But the agenda item itself, it doesn't uh, uh, it state what exactly it's, it's, it's being purchased. So, so in this case, then, then supplemental documents aren't even worth putting up? Uh, no, the, the, the supplemental documents are, are, are good to put up just to show what the invoices, are, like the quotes are, uh, as far as what the items are being referenced to. Uh, but you know, in the item, in the agenda item itself, uh, since the agenda goes out, uh, when the stakeholders review it uh, and, and look at it, uh, when you look at office items, they're not quite sure what it's, those office items might be and entail to to like up to a thousand dollars. So that's why it's, it's best to always just include some uh, descriptive information, such as office equipment uh, or paper and such toner. Um, resupplies. Let, let me um, ask you this, Jose, is that, in, is that in a best practice or is that under the Brown Act? That's per Brown Act, is just uh, to provide sufficient information uh, to, to the stakeholders. So they're able to distinguish what exactly the item is uh, so that they can make an educated decision to attend the meeting and speak up on the item itself uh, or, or not. Okay, Sarah, we'll continue it to next month then. Okay, so we're going to table item 10B to the next meeting. Uh, so here we go, uh, 10C. Now this one's interesting. Vince, can you open up the supporting doc for uh, the uh, item 10C, uh, LHNC CIS? One second. There it is. Below that. There this it is. One, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is about, I didn't put the title on it, but if you scroll down, there's the motion. This is about just cause tenancy. Yeah. <laughs> so this is about, this was written by Cedillo, right? Yeah, let's see, da, 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 da. This yeah. is just cause tenancy, right? Yeah, okay, so it's like this. Uh, we have rent controlled apartments, right? So if your apartment was built between before 1978, it's rent controlled. Uh, this is about ones that were built after 1978 and uh, protections that tenants need. And so, uh, and to need to uh, stop uh, being evicted, right? Just cause. You could be evicted for any reason out of a non rent controlled apartment. Uh, so, this is from 2017. Our neighborhood council wrote a community impact statement in 2017 opposing this motion. Uh, which I've included below. Or uh, Vince, can you scroll up a little bit? There it is. So if you, it says Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council submits this community impact statement against council file 170454. So they didn't want um, control, uh, yeah, uh, tenants, uh, whatever. <sighs> Tenant protections back then, I guess. So we are, amending and resubmitting this uh, community impact statement because this council file is still open. So uh, we've rewritten the sort of community impact statement on this motion to take away that against part because 77% uh, of the renters in Lincoln Heights or of the people in Lincoln Heights are renters. So this is very important here. Um, so Vince, if you scroll up, it has the community impact statement Kind of stuck in my hair. So, Sarah, this particular council file is it, it's it's opposing it or supporting it now? Oh, ours would be supporting it. Okay. Yeah, because um, I mean, on my I'll let let me do the motion first to accept the letter, and then we can open it up to board discussion. I like to make a motion to accept the uh, community impact statement letter. Uh, concerning council file 170454. Um, is there a second? Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. People can't. Uh, is there a second? 
if, if you guys second it, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. That way I know if somebody's seconding it. Oh, we got okay, two. Richard. Okay, right. Gina Benny. Okay. All right. Just cause tenancy. So yeah. Just Richard, for the record, uh, you second it, right? Richard, yeah. area rep? Yes. Okay, thank you. Cool. Jesus. So I have a first and a second. Do we have any uh, board discussion? Any board members want to discuss? So I, I should give you the title of this. I didn't write it on the darn thing, but it's a uh, just cause tenancy and evictions uh, on non rent control apartment units. And it was written in 2017. The council file is still open. I think I, I just want to make two points on this that I think are very interesting. And I think it's a good education for us all. You know, the city of LA right now currently uses the RENA numbers, right? To look at the population and what, you know, what we make. But on this document, they actually acknowledge within district one, eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, and 15, that the median incomes are 35,000. You're which right. Is, which is contradictory to what the RENA numbers are at. But another important part, which sometimes we have to look on, on a charter law and the health, safety, and welfare of the public, but it, it even declares here that displacement through evictions has a direct impact to the health, safety, or welfare of the Los Angeles citizens by uprooting children and their schools, uh, disrupting long-lasting community networks that are integrated into citizen welfare, forcing low-income residents to pay unaffordable relocation costs. I think, you know, this document, when we look at it, it it's a it's a precedent. I mean, I was just reading it right now and it, and it hit me when I seen those two parts in it because the city historically has always stood on the negative part of it. And part of what we're seeing in development is based off those RENA numbers. For them to have a document that Sevilla wrote that's saying it's 35,000, it should wake up the public, all of us to understand that those numbers and this building numbers are all based on falsehoods. Yeah, right. this, this looks like we, wrote, like we wrote this motion. Actually, there's a phrase in it that we actually wrote in our redistricting uh, community impact statement. Um, it wasn't health, safety, and welfare, but there was some phrase within here. I just saw it. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, the thing that, ter that, that I look at and that really disgusts me fighting housing rights and land use issues is the fact that they're now looking at displacement as, as being an impact. You know, the first people to ever write about it was the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. And for, for a city to now, I mean, most people will say, look, be glad that they did it now, right? Yeah. But the problem is this is a historical point that if we don't base it on the health, safety, and welfare, which doesn't just mean your environment, it means your, your health, it means your mental health, Okay, all of these things are key components to what's in this letter and why it, for me, it's important to push, but also make this and maybe our land use or maybe in our sustainability community, a letter that we write on that addresses why use the RENA numbers, but down here, abracadabra, they don't exist for this one document. Well, this document, I, it's an anomaly. It's, it was started in 2017 and it's been extended <laughs> twice to 2023. Let's maybe uh, unmute all the board members. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Well, we want everybody to know about code of conduct. You know, you'll be given one warning and the second warning, and then you'll be censored for removal. Victor. Yeah, um, I was just looking at the panelist side, um, not including Jose. Um, I don't think we have enough people here, if I'm not mistaken. Give me one second. No, you may be right. Holy crap. We're down to 13. 13, yeah. Wait, is anybody on the attendee side? Let me double check. Oh, we have- Annalie? Annalie, get on this side. No, no, no. She can't get on because she's on a phone, but she's okay. Oh I my God. Okay, yeah. nobody leave. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah. If you guys leave, um, we go to, you know, we just let it be known and don't just dip out. I'm not leaving. Love I'll you. be here the whole meeting. All right. Well, let's let's uh. Hold on, hold on let's, Sarah. Uh, just, just for the record, when yeah. people see this, or they if they uh, public records act, right? 
Yeah. I just know that on our panelist side, Jose's not a member, but we do have 13 on the panelists. And on our attendee side, Anna Lee mm -hmm. is a member, but due to her using a landline, mm -hmm. I cannot promote her over. So I just wanted that recorded for the record. Mm, who did we lose? Oh, we lost. Wow. Hey, Sarah, I can suggest for for the other board member that's on the call, you can just rename it. Uh, the rename the, the name. That's why it's easier to just identify as well. She's on the phone though. I, I, I'll rename her. You can uh, rename the, the, the name. So instead of a phone number, it'll be the name of a phone number. Okay. So okay. I'll rename her. And then I just counted everyone. We have 15 panelists actually. Oh, we do. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for staying on this meeting. We're gonna um, continue this item here. So uh, like I said, this was a uh, our neighborhood council back in 2017 wrote a community impact statement opposing protections for renters in non-rent controlled apartments. So we are rewriting this SIS and resubmitting it with some new 2021 info from Lincoln Heights uh, for the record. Okay. I think, I don't see no more board members. We should go to the public if they have any. <laughs> Anybody from the public have any uh, comments on this? Vince, can you scroll back up? To Give me one second. I don't see any people in the public. Okay, so now we're going to take it for a vote. You know, I just kind of like so the eviction moratorium, like Seca Punto's tenants, uh, the history of apartment buildings or from old buildings in Lincoln Heights being torn down in the uh, late 70s and 80s for uh, apartment buildings, right? Non rent control. Just the uh, history in Lincoln Heights of absentee landlordism and protections. Uh, so I guess we'll take it for a vote. Yeah, vote now. So what's the motion again, Vince? We got a second. The motion is to is to accept for any second the motion already, but the motion is to accept the letter, the community impact statement for council file 170454. All right, so we have a second by Richard. So, uh, Bernie, and, Bernie second this one. Oh, Bernie did? Sorry. Bernie, okay, so now we're going to take it for a vote. Bernie, could you do roll call, please? All right. Um, Sarah Clendenning? Yes. Yes. Ben Wadsworth? I'll go back to him. Chente? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy Soto? Yes. Benny? Yes. Didia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Diana? Yeah. Anna Lee? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Victor? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Si. Steve? Yes. Lena? Going back to uh, ben. ben. Yeah. And Lena. I don't see Lena on the line. Well, that is 14 yeses, so we do have quorum. Okay, yeah. All right, good. Okay, so nobody leave this meeting. Motion carries. Woo, all right. So next we move on to the next item. It's uh, item 10D, discussion and possible action on letter and community impact statement regarding council file 140268-S13, the tenant anti-harassment ordinance. And this was penned by Jose Huizar. And it's still being sort of amended. So it's still open. Uh, let's see, so 10D. There it is. All right. So 
It's saying uh, what agent, you know, what um, tools does the city have to punish uh, harassing landlords that threaten tenants, you know, potentially interfering, uh, taking away uh, reduction of services, uh, refusing to accept rent, all the classic things to get you out, right? What can the city do? So they've passed some, uh, if you scroll down, there is an ordinance already, I think, is it on here? But they're amending it and uh, we want it to be even stricter. Right now we have no protections. There's only the federal uh, DOJ for harassment. Uh, what is it called? The Federal Housing Act, harassment and discrimination, but it's impossible to get them to do much. All right, uh, do you have a second? Oh wait, Vince, sorry, I'm done talking. No, no, uh, yeah, let me, let me make the motion uh, to approve community impact statement in one second, uh, uh, community impact statement for council file 140263-S13. Do I have a second? I'll second. Ben seconds. Then it's just a uh, board comment, Sarah, and then uh, community oh. uh, community comment. Okay, so any board member comment? Ben, Benny, excuse me. Yeah, um, yeah. I just I just noticed you you. Um, it's actually six eight. The the council file is is um. You said three instead of eight. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I mean I, I just oh, no. want to point that out. Has, let me just make a correction to it. The, the correction that Benny is referring to is uh, the approval of the community impact statement for council file fourteen zero two six eight S thirteen, and uh, I believe uh, Ben uh, seconded. Okay. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Benny. Did you have a comment, Benny, or was just that fix? Um, no, yeah, I was, I mean, I mean, just on the title alone, tenant anti-harassment, uh, anything that will support our tenants uh, from being harassed, I support. That's right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I think with the uh, just for um, you know maybe some some food for thought for the uh, the tenants uh, committee which is with uh, Fernanda is that this is another important document to keep into and look at the uh, city charter to see that a lot of these ordinances that we have in the housing authority they have no teeth in there right to punish somebody that is retaliating against a, a tenant and sometimes those those regulations have to change and, and I think part of it's the policy we got to look into so if I can help you with that or anything let me know because that's definitely something to be discussed in the tenants right um, committee 100 percent thank you Vince I don't see Sarah I don't see any other board members let's move on to the public comments if there's anybody in the public that wishes to make a comment, you can do so by pushing star nine if you're on the landline, or you can use the little hand icon. Sarah, I don't see any. Okay, so let's take it for a vote. Uh, Secretary Sanchez. Let's restate the motion. The motion is to approve the community impact statement for council file 14026 S13. It was seconded by, by Ben. Okay. And then just really quickly for like voting protocol purposes, uh, did you want me to start with the president first? I think the same way you did it before. I think okay. that's good for right now. Yeah. Sarah? Uh, yes. Ben? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Ponte? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Lydia? 
I'm sorry I wasn't fast enough to get my hand up in the appropriate time to ask a question, so I'll abstain. Joanna? Yes. Diana? Yeah. Anna Lee? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Victor? Yes. Richard? Ortiz? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Nina? That's 13 yeses and one abstain. 13 yeses, one abstain. Motion carries. Abstains? To abstain is a yes, right, Vince? Yes. Yes. So that's 14 yeses, technically. All right, so now we'll, motion carries. Now we're going to move to the next item, item 10E, to planning and land use committee item. Uh, discussion and possible motion regarding 2824 to 2830 North Pruitt Street. Uh, city planning case number ZA2021-5204-ZAD. The project uh, 5204 proposes to construct a new two-story 3,873 square foot single family dwelling and an attached 800 square foot ADU, accessory dwelling unit under separate administrative review. Uh, three retaining walls measuring 60 feet, 62 feet, 32 feet, Six by six inches and 35 foot by three inches long and up to six feet in height and a lot that measures 9,536 square feet total. It's a vacant lot. This is within the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. The project also proposes 745 cubic yards of grading and 645 cubic yards of exporting <clears throat> soil. This is located at Flat Top. Before we start this, with that motion read already, I'd like to make the motion to approve the letter so we can start the discussion on it. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Fernanda seconds, and then we can have board discussion now. All right, so Vince, can you pull up the letter, please, from the supporting documents? So that the, the, uh, this was an applicant that, uh, yeah, they presented uh, at the Planning and Land Use Committee. We voted against the project. We're writing a letter. There's a hearing on the 10th for the Zoning Commission. So we want to have a letter uh, attached to the case file for this project. This is at 2824 to 2830 Pruitt Street. This is at Pruitt and Thomas. There's an aerial view on in there somewhere. Um, it's right at the lookout point at Flat Top. Actually, Vince, it's, yeah, there it is. Stop, see that? Thomas. All right. So uh, board member discussion. So I would just like to say we were at the uh, the planning and land use meeting last night, and uh, you know they grabbed two lots to put together to make this massive property. Um, I made the comments that this property would would affect Lincoln Heights real estate because these are like little mini mansions up there, and would set precedent on some of the housing prices. I mean, we just saw a letter right now addressing health, safety, and welfare of the public. And sometimes this is where I kind of think they contradict themselves and whether they really care about us or not. Anyone that would approve this project would know that it would have a dire impact on the communities of Lincoln Heights and surrounding communities. It would also take away public space. Um, historically, people have had access to that spot. Um, it also has its indigenous roots in, 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 in Los Angeles history. And I think it's a disservice, you know, if this, this project was to move forward because I think it would really hurt the community more than it would help the community. Thank you. I don't see anybody else, Sarah. All right. Um, yeah, Vince, can you just scroll down and go through some of the photos real quick? Yeah, so uh, this is a letter uh, just opposing the project based on basic health, safety, and welfare, and then security of our community and the uh, environmental and geological limitations of the hill and repercussions of activations with landslides and stuff like that. Um, so this is actually a, a building that's over 4,000 square feet tall when you include the ADU. 
um, and they purchased uh, five lots actually. No, one, two, three, four, five, six lots. Uh, this is just two of them. Um, so the letter. Okay, so any more board member comments on this? No, I don't see any. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? So Anna Lee, yeah, okay, there you are. Yeah, Anna Lee, uh, comment please. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment. Um, I was up there a couple months ago and somebody was doing uh, some maintenance on their uh, plot. I know last night when I listened to the meeting, um, the designer had mentioned that there was multiple um, uh, owners that he had like six owners that he had that were in favor of the project. And this one um, individual that I spoke with who owns a lot up there was extremely in favor of keeping it an open space and that he actually would be interested in possibly donating his lot to uh, keep it an open space. And I have his contact information and I think it's something uh, that we should look into and possibly pursue. But I don't know if it has any relevance in like opposition to what the designer was saying about how, you know, people are so all for it around surrounding, but that's not the complete truth and um oh. uh, i do have the contact info so that's all thank you yeah i mean when you look at so two of the lots that they bought on the west side <clears throat> basically where that big pile of rubble was from the other developer from the slide facing west um those two lots are um landslide uh zones and uh the one next to it was like damaged in a storm i don't think that one can ever be built on but in any case uh yeah. Steve, Steve has a comment. Steve? Yeah, I just want to say I, I, I agree with what was said earlier. This is really um, land that, that historically is, is the remnants of what's beautiful about this neighborhood. This massive structure, it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's really going to be a, I don't want to say an outdoor, it's just, it's uh, removing the traditional. Uh, sacredness of of the neighborhood uh, anyway that that's all i wanted to share yeah and it's also a visual visual physical reminder of the disconnect of people's desires and then the needs of the community so well, if you scroll down there's a picture of it terrace down the hill it's kind of a cross cut it has pool swimming pools i don't mean to go to town on this but um did he has her hand up all right, then scroll up. I, I really got to show you oh, this. Oh, oh, okay. uh, keep going. All right. Oh, wait, go down again. Keep going. Okay, so that one, that one, if you scroll in, the center image there has two little swimming pools. Well, th this blue piece right here is the swimming pool. Yeah, so if you go, the, the images below it, there's a, one in the center. So those three long ones, yeah. So Didia? Thanks, were you done with your point about the swimming pool? I didn't, I wasn't clear. Oh yeah, yeah, I was just uh, trying to clarify like exactly the magnitude, like in conjunction with the sort of ADU that's proposed that's tacked on, it's basically one property. Well, I just wanted to say I'm grateful that the neighborhood council is taking this strong action. There are so many reasons to oppose a structure like this in our community. And I just wanted to say that in addition to all the excellent points that are already mentioned in the letter, our open space at the top of our mountains is a resource for the entire city because everybody who drives on the five and everybody who comes from downtown through the tunnels on the Arroyo Parkway sees that open space and benefits from it. And, and destroying it is, is, is destruction of a resource that we all share. It's, it's so beloved of our community, but it's, a, but it's a much broader, much more important resource. And I'm so grateful to see us fighting so hard to keep it. Thanks. Thank you. Melanie? Thank you, Didia. Mel? Hey, I'll make it quick because I really want to hear from the public on this. But um, yeah, Didia, like exactly what you said. And I we tried to kind of make that point among others last night at the uh, pluck meeting. Um, 
and it's it was an unfortunate presentation, although very thorough. Um, but I think what a lot of it rested on was the point that this is like a dream home for these two people, um, which you know just was offensive thinking about how much this space means to the community at large and then sacrificing that for the quote unquote dream of two people. Um, so it just like was <laughs> colonization in action, just like watching that um, come come out. I, I'm, I also am really happy that the board's coming out um, seemingly so strongly against this. And I, I really look forward to hearing from the public. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Mel. We got Deanna. Diana? Uh, I don't know if this point's been brought up before. I might just be reiterating some stuff, but we already know these two people. They aren't going to be participating in the community. They probably don't even work the in the community. They probably won't send their kids if they have any uh, to like a community school, to like schools in the community. They'll just be like outsiders looking down on us. It, it's not really something I like. Yeah, the imagery, you know? Thank you. Thank you, Diana. All right, so, uh, uh, this is Jose. I uh, just want to again remind board members of the code of conduct, also uh, in regards to the goals of the neighborhood council to be inclusive of everyone. Uh, so again, uh, please uh, careful in the comments. Okay, My you. bad. Sorry. Uh, any other board member comments on this item? Um, I just wanted to echo um, uh, Deidre as well because um, you know. Lots of the times that I've been up there, I've met people from different areas of Los Angeles that come up there, that get to enjoy um, that space. And it's not only, you know, our community that's getting open green space taken away, but it's happening all over the city. So it not only benefits, yeah, our community, but the whole city. So that's all. And it has been a struggle for decades now to preserve flat top. And this is the Lincoln Heights side. And unfortunately we have battles still. Um, any other board member questions or comments? Real quick, yeah, I we, we were in the meeting yesterday and um, I didn't want to take too much time today, but yeah, just it's good to hear that everyone recognizes the huge impact such a massive project will have, not only on Flat Top itself, but um, it sets a huge precedence to what would come right after um, in terms of gentrification and displacement and the housing market and all of that after. Um, I think any person that truly cares about Lincoln Heights can see the detrimental effect this project would have. Thank you. Thank you, Vern. I just wanna mention like in Lincoln Heights, we have 39,000 people and the amount of open green space for each person is smaller than the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of printer paper. Um, yeah, uh, what else was I gonna say? Well. Public comment, we got nobody. Well, I don't see anybody in the public that has their hand up, but I don't know if anybody wants this to. This is at Flat Top, yeah. This is at the lookout point where uh, Spider killed, uh, or where uh, Miko Kills Spider in Blood and Blood Out and the Tierra album cover was shot. And unfortunately we have the gate there now that we didn't, that was put there by another neighborhood to keep us off the hill. We so got, we got yeah. Candace and the public. Okay, so public comments, let's roll. Yes, hi, this is Candace Maples. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. I just, uh, you know, I'm so grateful of what everyone's saying because this is this is our open space and it, it's so crucial that we keep it that way. And the idea of this massive um, structure being built that's going to basically take over the, the whole flat top when it comes to adding the road and, and the turning around for the fire, like yesterday when I was listening in the meeting, like it, it would really take up almost all of flat top just for this one structure and the whole community benefits from this. It's absolutely crucial that we try to maintain this and keep that open space. And it just means so much to me that I'm able to be heard and understood that this is uh, imperative for the community to be able to have this. Thank, Thank you, Candace. Our next uh, speaker Otis. is uh, Otis. Yeah. Otis? 
Yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um. Oh, we oh, zipped out. We lost him. No, he's there. Oh. Notice? Nope. Right here, allow to talk. Give me one second. Hello, Otis. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if he's having back technical back problems. Come back yeah. into range. Uh, any other public comments? We'll go back to Otis. Uh, there's okay. Sorry, guys. Am I here? Hey. Am I here? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, so sorry. Um, well, I guess a couple of points for me. One would, would be, you know, to reiterate the concept of two people's happiness outweighing a whole community, you know, let alone a whole city of people that come to watch fireworks on 4th of July, come on New Year's. We watch people up there every single night. There are two people sitting up there watching it right now. That is what that that space has been for you know from what i know this is the oldest community in los angeles that space has been there for as long as this community has been here why on earth would the happiness of two outweigh everybody and and cause a blemish on on the, you know the mere integrity of a, of a beautiful hillside when everything else is dedicated to homes you know god bless them um and another point that was made that that hit me really hard was the concept of them not being from here. And I, I didn't know that or not, but I wondered it. We are, you know, I bought here maybe four years ago. I've known L.A. my whole life. Um, it is something that I am loyal to. And in the concept of people just, you know, coming to a community and changing everybody's life for their own benefit, that seems incredibly thoughtless. And I don't know where they're from, but they should. Thank you so much. The, the electric guys are doing. Oh, you're awesome. So the the electric. The, uh, they were working on some some uh, the power lines. Sorry, um, but uh, anyway, uh, you know, if if it was an old couple that had owned that property for 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 sixty years and was like, God, this is our dream home. I, I guess I might listen to them and go, really? Like, this is something that 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 two human beings want that overshadows thousands and thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands throughout the year, uh, every year. Uh, we see them all day, every day. Thank you guys so much. I hope and pray that does not happen. Thank you. Um, any other uh, public comments? Okay. Um I also want to mention that this is sacred land uh, identified under AB52 in the sacred land database of Tongva sacred land. This is a site that's sacred. And uh, also uh, we wrote a community impact statement back in May. Uh, Richard, wrote, Richard Larson wrote it against mansion, mansionization in the, you know, amidst uh, poverty and homelessness in Lincoln Heights. Um, so uh, we're going to take this for a vote now. Um, now this is, uh, a letter for the zoning, it, it, it's basically, um, there's a zoning commission hearing on the 10th. So it's a, uh, it's uh, addressed to the zoning commission, but then also to planning uh, and uh, to the POM committee and then uh, LA city planning and uh, Vince Bertoni and everybody. All right, uh, so the motion again, Vince. The motion is to approve the let the community impact statement uh, regarding the uh, three no excuse me two eight two four two eight thirty North Pruitt Street ZA two zero uh, two one five two zero four ZAD. Well, this is a motion to uh, oppose. Oppose. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Take it for a vote for, uh, do we have a second? Do we have the second already? Yeah. Yeah, Fernie seconded. Okay, Fernie, so uh, Fernie, let's take it for a vote. Uh, can we do roll call? All right, Sarah Clendenning. Uh, yes. Ben Rossler. Yes. Chente. Yes. 
Nancy, yes. Nancy? Yes. Diana? Yes. <laughs> that was Benny, okay. Diana? Oh, yeah. Oh, Didia? I vote yes to oppose the proposed development. Joanna? Yes. Emily? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Victor? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Si. Yes. That's 14 yes. All right, motion carries. All right, so now we'll move on to the next item, item 10F, discussion of possible action on letter and community impact statement regarding council file 21-1256. This is about uh, Downey Rec, uh, Albion Park. Um, that's 1739 North Albion Street, Albion Riverside Park, Albion Dairy Park Project, transfer of jurisdiction, general services department to Department of Recreation and Parks, RAP. This was written by Cedillo only a few days ago on the, uh, October 27th. Um, so our community impact statement uh, what would it be? Item F. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. There it is. It's at the bottom here. So we're just trying to make sure that uh, we want it to be transferred because like Downey Rec, that whole Downey Rec, Downey Park is RAP, Department of, Park, Department of Recreation and Parks. Uh, this uh, Albion Park site is under the jurisdiction of General Services Division because this was sort of a water project, a water reclamation project, an irrigation project. Uh, we want it transferred to Department of Recreation and Parks uh, into perpetuity uh, forever. Uh, you know, uh, Vince, if you want to talk. No, no, I think you you pretty much put it in play. We just want to make sure that the uh, park remains under the control of the Department of Recreation and Parks, and that it's not given to any other jurisdiction within the city, or in the future that it also doesn't fall into what is a public private partnership where sometimes they let these parks you know go down and then all of a sudden they come back to the public and they want to say hey we need a private partnership to keep the park up. so we want to make sure that we leave it in the public's hands so that if any any of those things happen in the near future that through the department of recreation and parks the public would have you know the right to oppose it speak on it but it's definitely a better play it's it has a better home in the department of recreation and parks yeah, and I think, you know, this was the site of the original uh, Tangba, the, the Yangna village, Yangna, which, uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, it's an important site. And it would be, with the Cornfield Royal specific plan, it would be, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues going on. Uh, any board member comments on the site? Let me make the, yeah, let me make the motion. I'd like to make the motion to approve the community impact statement Council file 21-1256. Do I have a second? Second. Steve seconds. Now, now uh, board member comments. I don't see any, Sarah. Okay, so we'll take it to public comments. Any public comments? I don't see any. Okay, so uh, let's take it for a vote. Uh, Secretary Sanchez, uh, roll call please. Sarah Clendenning. Yes. Ben. Chante. Yes. Fernanda. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Benny. Yes. Didia. Yes. Joanna. Yes. Diana. Yes. Annalie. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Victor. Yes. Richard Ortiz. Yes. Steve. Yep. And back to Ben. Yes. That's 14 yeses.
Okay, motion carries. All right, Donnie Breck. Well, we're going to move to the final item, uh, G, 10G, uh, discussion of possible action on motion of reconsideration of the Tenants Ad, Ad Hoc Committee. And this was proposed by Richard Larson. The, uh, motion for reconsideration of the vote to approve the Housing Rights Ad Hoc, the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council Ad Hoc Committee. The motion presented at the last special board meeting, I think that was on the 21st, did not define a, a scope of function for the ad hoc. The title itself is broad and needs important clarifying conditions and verbiage such as mission statement and the time of existence. I'll do, yeah, what I'll do is I'll make the motion. There's two ways to do this. I mean, I don't know if everyone knows what happened. Uh, what Richard's claiming here is that we didn't give enough information on the title or what exactly the committee's gonna do. So if I make the motion right now to accept this motion as is, we can discuss it um, and then approve it or disapprove it, right? If you approve it, it's basically gonna say, we might have to write a short statement. If we don't approve it, then the committee stays as is and we move on. And in the bylaws though, Vince, can you expound on the bylaws please? Well, on this particular one for making the committee, I, I don't think we, we didn't violate anything on the bylaws. I think what Richard's asking about is whether we can have some type of substance in it, right? Like, what does the committee do? He wanted more detail. That's basically what the reconsideration is questioning us here on the motion. Yeah. On its title, it's asking for its mission statement. Um, none of these are required within our bylaws, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Let's get Richard. Should we get Richard? Uh, I don't think he's on here. Not on the meeting. All right, this is uh, Jose. So for your bylaws, it stays for ad hoc committees. They need to have a defined purpose. You know, identify what the tasks are for an ad hoc committee itself. Uh, the time frame of that ad hoc committee of you know when, how long it's going to you know deliver its its task or the project that's indicated uh, back to to the board. Uh, once once it's accomplished its task, uh, the ad hoc may is disbanded at that point. Uh, so at this point, the title itself, housing rights, is self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, but what what is the the actual task of this ad hoc committee? Outreach. Provide resource information through outreach. So would it be to develop a outreach program uh, in regards to our housing and then have the board approve that? Because uh, it, it needs to be kind of clear of, of what exactly it is. If not, you're intending to create like a standing committee uh, sure. where it will continue to move uh, continuously regarding a topic. So I do want to kindly remind that when the board voted on this, um, this was explained when the ad hoc committee was presented. Um, and I also want to kindly remind of the last general board meeting we had where Richard Larson made a community board comment calling um, the ad hoc committee anarchists. So I don't think that this motion was presented in good faith and truly by our bylaws we didn't violate anything. Um, if there's any clarification I can provide reiterating once more this ad hoc is to provide resource information to the tenants of Lincoln Heights in regards to their rights when facing eviction or landlord harassment. Um, yeah, and another thing Jose I wanted to add on to that our bylaws don't require this to be written and they're not specific in whether they have to be written or spoken and usually under un, under the, the the law it would default as, as an announcement of it. And they were announced at our general board meeting. And it stated exactly what uh, Fernanda just stated, what, what its purpose was. The only thing I can see on here that if we wanted to add a timeline to it or a date, um, that's something we can take on, you know, now we can amend it to say, we want to add the ad hoc to be 10 years from now. So you don't have to deal deal with it. <laughs> I just wanna, you know, I just want to talk about this just in terms of it being a sort of racist. I'm sorry to say it, but it is, uh, you know, uh, the whole intent of this uh, sort of 
debasing of our tenants' rights thing. I mean, I received, you know, multiple board members received this email announcing, <clears throat> saying that videos have arisen showing board members congregating at local businesses, threatening them with racism and with the stated intention to remove their business from Lincoln Heights. I mean, the intent of this uh, reconsideration, I think is uh, something that needs to be questioned. Definitely, I wanna, I wanna ask Jose, what is your, what is your um, recommendation on how to approach it? Uh, for, for me, what, what I recommend is just that, just have a clear purpose of, of the ad hoc committee and then with the time frame that it will complete its task. Okay, so then again, like with uh, in regards to the Brown Act too, is that with ad hoc committees, they have a specific purpose task that they're trying to seek to accomplish. And then uh, upon the completion of that task, it will be a, a, that, that committee is disbanded. And, and again, ad hoc committees are temporary. They're, they're short term uh, for, for a short term period. And that, that, that period is left up to the discretion of the board. Yeah, uh, the, what we recommend is at least like about, about six months at most. Uh, that's kind of like a short term period. Um, but it's still it's still left up. I know the, the Brown Act doesn't require have a time limit or anything. I mean, that's what I mean, we understand what the good practice would be, but sometimes the good practice doesn't suit us and we want to stick with state law. And I, I know pretty much on the Brown Act, it doesn't require us to have a date. That's why, whether it's a standing or an ad hoc committee, it's left up to the board to decide, you know, if we want it for a year, two, three years, four years. And I can understand the asking of the definition or its, its submission statement, which I think Fernando already addressed now. And the only thing I think is, is left is for the board to decide right now, uh, how long do we want the ad hoc to be? Should we have it to the end of an election? Because I think it's I think the eviction issue, the housing right issue is gonna be with us for a long time. That's I right. think we I think we keep it for our term as elected officials so that if a new board gets elected into the future, they have the ability to dissolve or it dissolves itself. And yeah. if need be, we can revisit this at another meeting where we can actually turn it like uh, Jose was saying into a standing committee so that way we don't have any of the restrictions. Maybe we could 86 the parade committee and then do it at tennis right ad hoc. Uh, I know that the uh, five lots ad hoc that uh, uh, yeah Richard had, it, I don't believe it even had any deadline or anything. It was going for years. Uh, and I this, I think this tennis right ad hoc might only be like the third ever ad hoc that Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council had in 20 years. I'm not sure. What I'll do is I'll make the motion right now to accept the definition that Fernanda just put out. Our bylaws don't re don't mention and don't require whether we have to have it in writing or not. But this is a public meeting. We've announced its mission statement. Um, right now, what we have to decide is the time. So I can make the motion to say we accept the statement that Fernanda made, and then what time do we have it? Should we put it in the four years what's left of our term? So then the motion would be um, motion to accept the mission statement that Fernanda put out right now as our statement and our, our guidelines. And then the ad hoc committee would have a lifespan of four years, which would start as of today, November the 4th. And then I can get my calendar up November. That'd be April and um, what, 2025? Ooh. Correct. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. His brain works faster than mine. <laughs> um, Correct. Yeah, and then do we have to make a motion for to re accept or reject the uh, motion of reconsider reconsideration? Well, that's what we're doing now. We're reconsidering what he's okay, saying. Perfect. He wanted, yeah, he wanted the... Uh, uh, basically the mission statement, Fernanda just put that out there. And right now we're addressing the time of its existence. And we picked to have it starting today, November the 4th and expiring on what day again, Ben? Sorry about that. My April, 2025. 
Correct. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. All right. So, uh, so you can, uh, someone can second it. I made the motion. I'll second. Okay, second Ben. Okay, so now we're gonna open up for board member comment. I have none. Okay, any uh, public comments here on this item? Please raise your hand or press star nine. I don't see any. All right, so we're gonna take it for a vote. Uh, Secretary Sanchez. Oh, one second, we have uh, Didia. Didia? Thank you. Could we clarify Fernanda's um, wording so that we're, we, we all know what exactly we're voting on? Thank you. <laughs> right, so the ad hoc committee's goal is to provide resources and information to tenants in Lincoln Heights in regards to renters' rights and um, what to do when you're being evicted. Um, as mentioned earlier today during the committee um, updates, I think it's important to spread the information of the legal clinics we have at the Church of Epiphany every Saturday, the resources that we have that are brought by uh, the Lincoln Heights Tenants Union, as well as pamphlets and important phone numbers to call if you're facing eviction or landlord harassment. Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you, Bernie. All right. So we'll take that for a vote now, correct? Correct. Okay, so Bernie, call if you, Bernie, if you would like to do roll call. Sarah Clendenning? Uh, yes. Ben? Yes. Chante? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy? Yes. Jenny? Yes. Didia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Diana? Yeah. Annalise? Yes. Melanie? Yes. yes. Victor? Yes. Richard Ortiz? Yep. Steve? Yes. That's 14 yeses. All right, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now we'll move on to item number 11, uh, non-agenda public comments. If anybody from the public wants to comment on an item that's not on the agenda, please press star nine or raise your hand and you have two minutes to speak. I don't see any. Okay, none. All right, uh, I guess we'll motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Ben seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? I didn't think anybody would oppose. I want to thank everyone for attending the public. Summer. Summer. Anna. Yay. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye.